Hi guys and welcome to the latest TV review. Now here is something that a lot of you asked me to check out and it's very well known Dragonfly, the latest one Cobalt and also the most expensive one. And uh, let, we, let me quickly start with what's in the box. When you buy it, it costs 300 bucks. And inside, okay, let me quickly remove this. You of course have the dragonfly itself. Then the carrying pouch, it looks like leather. And the dragon tail, which is actually a USB extension needed for you to hook it up to the phone. And that's actually a welcome addition because in earlier versions or cheaper versions, if you will, you would have to buy this attachment yourself. And in case of Dragonfly Black, which I also had, I was just using some cheap uh, USB adapter like this one. But here they provided their own made by AudioQuest with supposedly quality cable. And that's great, especially because in terms of ergonomics, it fit very well. As you can see, it's uh, like very slim and it fits very snugly. So there's no chance that you accidentally rip this off. And as you can see here, it's a USB DAC preamp and headphone amp. Preamp basically means that you have volume control and AudioQuest says that Integrated volume control is bit perfect. It's looseless regarding quality. I don't know about that, but those are the claims anyway. And um, interesting thing that USB DAC is one of the best Sabre DACs available on the market. And also headphone amp comes from Sabre. And this is the best combination ever seen in a Dragonfly so far. I'm actually not really sure if anybody else is using this specific Sabre deck in a portable device. A lot of desktop products are using the same one, like a Kada stone board or a lot of toppings and things like that. It's a very popular chip, but this time it's in, it's in a really small package. Use is really fast free. If you're using it with your phone, you just connect it and it is recognized basically immediately and it just works. It's plug and play. I tried it with my phone, desktop, laptop. It's driverless. You don't need to install any drivers. It's really, really simple and, and easy to use. Now, this gets us to the most important thing and that's sound quality. And I'm very happy to say that for, for a, such a small device, it sounds quite big and quite lush. And um, let me elaborate a little bit on that. First thing that I noticed is the full bodiness of sound. And I was listening to some of my favorite singers and their voices, vocals were present, well-focused, full bodied even. And the same goes for instruments too. They sound meaty and beefy because they have like a really healthy bass line and that's great. Control is also really good. It's not the kind of beefiness that comes from having too much bass and uh, muddying everything. It's just a good, beefy, but well-controlled bass line. And same story goes for the mid-range. Because of this, it sounds full, it sounds lush, as I mentioned vocals before, and all other instruments. There, there's a sense of full bodiness that I really like. Fortunately, details are not lacking either. So this full tone is married with a lot of nice husky um, textury details and I, I like that with vocals especially. With instruments like strings there's a lot of clear sharp transients. Edges are nice too. So string instruments for example sound great. They sound lively and, and open and present. And I really, I really just loved the sound. It's one of those cases when I cannot actually detect anything that I really don't like. 
anything that I can really complain about. Everything is just it's just well rounded. There is weight. There is full bodiness. There is base control also. It's not a sluggish one. Um, there are plenty of details. Sound stage is decently wide. Layering is also really nice. You feel that everything has its own position nicely divided and spread across the sound stage. So all great so far. But to really tell value of a product, I always compare it with similar competing products on the market. And the first and the most logical one was the one that I recently reviewed. It's called Yermen Sparrow. It's also a portable device, also using Sabre DAC chip, but slightly different series. And it's even a little bit smaller in terms, looking like that, it's maybe even a little bit more compact because of this smaller cable and everything. The main difference is that Sparrow has both single-ended output, that's the 3.5 millimeters one that you find on Cobalt, and it also has balanced output, the smaller one, that's 2.5 millimeters four pole jack balanced output. And here the story gets interesting because first I compared single-ended with single-ended, which is quite logical. And I can tell you that the sound quality is roughly in the same ballpark, but Cobalt sounds a little bit more detailed, a little bit more open uh, to my ears. In terms of full bodiness and, and just tone uh, richness and mid-range bass details, they're very comparable, but Cobalt here digs a little bit more details from higher spectrum. That means a little bit crispier transients, a little bit more huskiness, uh, from vocals, for example, um, strings are a little bit livelier and I feel a little bit more air in the presentation. And I always say a little bit because the difference is really not big, but you notice that this one is a little bit darker in nature and sounds a little bit sweeter, if you will, but this one is a little bit more open and detailed. Things, however, change when you actually start using balanced output on Sparrow. And is it fair to compare it like that? Well, it is, I think, especially if your headphones support balanced connections, because this is a 300 bucks device, this is a 200 bucks device. In terms of price, this is even a cheaper one, and it offers balanced output. So when I compared balanced one versus Cobalt, uh, it was sort of a turnaround because now Sparrow started sounding more detailed, more open, and it was definitely digging more tiny details, more transients. And I think overall the, the control, the grip over headphones was a little bit better. Uh, when I say control and grip, I mean like rhythmically the bass line is a little bit tidier and snappier and everything else is a little bit cleaner and crisper and it's again not a big difference but there it is in in that moment i just preferred sparrow and if i had to choose between one of these two i would say if you have to use single-ended output. If if you are for some reason limited, your headphones support only single-ended output, I thought that Dragonfly Cobalt sounded a little bit better. But if you actually are able to, to utilize balanced output, then this one whoops, takes a hike and it, it defeats Cobalt. So I think in that case, it's, it's just a better buy. But as I said, if you're for some reason limited to single-ended output, then I think Cobalt is still the best portable device that I heard so far. Okay, and for the last part, I actually used Dragonfly Cobalt as a home deck, just connected to my room setup, 
my Cyrus amp and Cath LS50 speakers. And in that case, I compared it with several desktop decks, desktop products. And the one of them being Topping E30, a well-known product. I made a review here on the channel and this one is 130 bucks. Well, everything that I said about Cobalt with headphones still stands when you just use it as a deck, when you connect it directly to your amplifier. And in that case, it still has that full bodied sound, a really nice present vocals and everything. But when I actually switched to Topping E30 here, I noticed wider sound stage, more clarity. Instruments were separated better. There was just more clarity and better layering overall. And the difference is not huge, but it's easily noticeable. And it even grows if you add low noise power supply to E30 here. For example, I used iFi iPower, which is 50 bucks. In that case, you get to something like 180 bucks in total. And in that case, with low noise power supply, the difference is quite big. So why did I compare apples and oranges here, a clearly non-portable product? with the portable one, well, just because I wanted to give you a more insight into its sound capabilities. As a portable device, it's one of the best I've heard as a DAC amp combo driving your headphones. As a pure DAC, it cannot really compete even with a cheaper standalone DAC. And that's it. You can use it, its sound quality is still very good. So if you need a versatile device, if you need it to be both portable and standalone when you're at home, you don't want to have two separate products for those needs, it is very good for that. But if you're okay with separating those tasks to different devices, you should know that it can be bettered even by cheaper devices. Okay, so in conclusion, what I feel about Dragonfly Cobalt is that it is a really good device. I think it really is, especially for what it's meant to be, and that's a portable solution. Because you can just take this one, you can use it with phone, with laptop, with tablet. You can carry it in, in your pocket everywhere you go, and it just makes everything sound better. And if you are for some reason limited to single-ended connection for your headphones, it's probably the best portable device that I've heard so far. And when I say that, I, I mean truly portable device. I, I don't count something like this, uh, this is Earman TR amp. It's called portable, but I don't really think it is. It's, it, it's heavy, it's chunky, it's, it's not a pocket device, definitely. But this one is, and it works great, it sounds great. If you can use balanced connection, then Earman Sparrow is a better choice currently, in my opinion, because it sounds a little bit better and it's more affordable. And um, I promised in this channel description to never beat around the bushes, and I'm not going to do that. I, In that case, I see no reason why would you by Cobalt over Sparrow. This one also supports MQA and it's basically very similar device just from another manufacturer. It has slightly inferior single-ended output but superior balanced output and that's it. Um, 100 bucks less, so yeah, there you go. But just on its own, when I'm not comparing it with anything else and I'm not comparing prices, I really like it. liked it. It has well-rounded, mature kind of presentation without any real faults. But on today's competitive market, I would just feel much more comfortable recommended it if it costs at least like a third less than it currently costs. Now, yeah, well, one last thing too. 
if you already have this one, if you already bought this one, there, there is no reason to change it just because there is something similar which is more affordable or maybe slightly better with balanced connection. This is a perfectly good DAC amp. I'm just saying that if you're looking for one currently, I, I find it a little bit difficult to recommend in today's competitive markets when you can save some money and get equally good or even slightly better product. This one is still great. It has a, a really big brand and brand awareness behind it. And because of that, you pay a little bit more. But if you regularly watch my channel, for example, I can point you towards some maybe better value options. And that would be all for today, guys. If you liked this video, please click like and subscribe and share it with your friends because that would really help this channel grow and bring more interesting reviews in the future. Thank you for watching and see you next time.